John, that's kind of harrowing to hear there. I don't know how anyone can analytically think after 72 hours and you're going in there as a sick person. What, this recruitment freeze that has been put in place mm. in relation to the HSE is a budget, a 22 billion euro budget that we have for the HSE in Ireland. And it's not enough. Where's the money going? Yeah, and let's be clear, I can only quote the Chief Executive, uh, Bernard Gloucester of the HSE yesterday in his evidence to uh, the Oireachtas Committee, I'm on the Oireachtas Committee, um, that it's not a, uh, a freeze, that it's a pause, that it's a pause for a number of reasons. One, because the HSE exceeded the amount of uh, staff that it could employ in the year, so uh, it exceeded its budget. And the second thing is to wait and see exactly what the Department of Public Expenditure is going to agree to give them in terms of a supplementary budget. But, but, you, but you're but you are but you're right. There's but been, when it comes to staff, when they're yeah. when they're going, there's a there's a pause on yeah, here. Yeah. They are supplementing it with agency staff yeah. who cost more. So they the jobs are there. It seems like it's a very inefficient way to spend the money because agency staff are brought in. Yeah, and in fact, Bernard Gloucester, the last time he was before the, the uh, Roxas Health Committee, said that the agency staff was a piece that he was really tackling and had addressed since he became uh, CEO of the HSE. But the context, notwithstanding all that awful harrowing stuff uh, that our, your two guests, the two Rachels, have just said, is you are right, there's been a record investment in the health service. Yeah. I mean, an absolute record investment. It's almost doubled in eight years. Um the context now is there's also a rapid, unprecedented growth in demand. There was clearly a pent-up demand as a result of, of COVID. So while the system, for example, 178,000 additional patients were actually treated last year compared with 2022, but there's more coming into the system. Uh, so how do you deal with that? Robert Watt, the Director or Secretary General of the Department, has said, look, you know, the, 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 the budget is going to, or the demands are going to increase in, in health by 3 4% every year. The budget just can't increase exponentially. Uh, we're going to have to look for a supplementary budget in order to carry them through this year and, and for next year. But there are other things that they're looking at in terms of, you know, improved pathways of care that not everybody needs to go to hospital. There's these see and treat clinics would be one yeah. example. There are some hospitals as well, Marin, that are actually performing better than other hospitals. And Robert Watt described uh, this as a kind of a, a part of the puzzle where you have huge investment. Some hospitals actually have really good and positive flow throughs of patients. We say Louth Hospital, my own hospital, Tala Hospital here. Um, in relation to cutting some waiting lists, are doing really well. And then there are other hospitals which get equal new, investment. And it's getting more. I mean, a team went in to look at sure. Limerick. Yeah. And it had the highest record of people on trolleys yet, ever two days ago. Like, uh, yeah. And that team is now going into the northwest yeah. because there's record overcrowding there. Yeah. None of this is new and we don't seem to be able to do anything about it. And those people that they're treating is because we've got less GPs, they're all leaving the country, so we've got bigger waiting lists, so people are just going to the A&E rather it's, than just going to their primary care. No, and, I, and I, look, I take your point about GPs, but in the last uh, six or seven years, you know, we have... Um, there's a thousand additional beds in the system. There's two and a half thousand additional GPs in the system. There's almost seven and a half thousand additional nurses in the system. Um, so, uh, you know, Robert Watt spoke about uh, things like, you know, efficiencies, value for money, the stuff that we thought, you know, we didn't like to hear of. But there are issues where, whether it's leadership in some hospitals, some hospitals perform better than other hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, that's one of the things they're looking at in terms of what's the data around that. And data can be very valid, valuable yeah. in relation to this. Does it help people who are sitting in, and I've been on hospital trolley in a yeah. corridor too, so, you know, I can empathise with it. Um, but the context is massive investment, uh, pent up demand uh, that's there, but there are uh, more positive outcomes in relation to some treatments. And as I said, close to 200,000 additional patients went through the HSC yeah. system. Yeah. It's interesting though, to the with so before. many more staff, why are there so much overcrowding? We would love to hear from you today in relation to the HSE because we know the people who work within the HSE work incredibly hard. 0896 111 Thank you so much. Uh, Rachel Murray, thank you so much. She was a patient who was in a trolley in a hospital in the West uh, uh, just there over the weekend. Dr. Rachel McNamara, uh, who was speaking to us for the junior doctors today, we really do appreciate it and we hope that you get something resolved soon. And John Lahar TD and uh, Fianna Fáil TD and Iraq, this Health Committee member. Thank you so much for joining us this Thank morning. We appreciate it. Thanks. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. 